Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Football Manager 2021, or 2022, as we continue our journeyman glory hunter run with Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga, and another excellent season of Football Manager in the books. Obviously, as you guys saw, we won another double, this time the Cup and the European League. Let's get into the season review and the transfers, and... See if we're still here. Let's get into it. All right, Borussia Munchen Gladbach, end of season review 2032, 2033 season. Let's get into the new arrivals. Surely some of these got the positives. Adam Greiger, a B plus, not bad. Absolutely excellent, excellent player. Sarmiento, only a C plus. He came through in a few times, maybe to spit more on him than we should have, because I think ultimately Greiger ended up being a better player. Oh uh, yeah, ultimately Greiger did be a better player, but that's okay. I think he still does a lot of good stuff for us and I'm pretty happy with him. Davies coming in here on an A. I mean, he was an ex excellent pickup for 24 mil. Excuse me, Odalon coming in here, 32 mil, B minus, not too bad. Matthew Gibbons, who is a future transfer for us. We will be getting him um, at the end of the season. Uh, Gutierrez, I would love to keep him if we can get him for a reasonable price. Now, if we're going to have to spend like a bunch of money for him, no way. But if we get him for a fairly reasonable price, I wouldn't mind keeping him. Andrada, I love this pickup. I wanted this pickup big time. I'm glad we got him. I think he's got a huge, huge future ahead of him. Taylor, B-. minus. Okay, fair enough. I think he played relatively well, especially once we swapped him. To central midfielder, he, he really picked it up. Zazi, he wants to leave. That's fine. We'll see if we get most of this money back for him. Deers, really bad pickup for Deers. Really bad pickup for Deers. Um, he's got a lot of future, though. I think he can still develop into something good. Uh, so far, though, just not worth the money we spent on him. It was a really uh, C plus. He was just a backup. And Diaria, I think we're gonna be able to get most of this money back, if not getting a little bit more than this money back. We'll just help make help make up for some of these other guys a little bit. Transfers out. Bornau, uh, C. Amadi, C. I and mean, we didn't have much choice in the Amadi one. Malin, C. Lubak, C. Minus, Dennis, D. Okay, most of these I don't care about. Coyote, D. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Hoban, Obina. Any of these other big ones? None of these other were really big ones. I mean, it is what it is. We got what we got. Nothing we could do about it. Loans out. Georgie was loaned out. Mafi loaned out. Both of those guys actually performed really well. Roma actually won their Italian Cup this season, so not bad. So far, I mean, not too bad. Honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with most of that. I think we spent a little bit more, too much money on a couple players. I think we got a really good deal on a couple players. So in the end, not too, too bad. Only lost one game in all of the Euro Cup, which was that first game against Monaco. Oof, should not have lost that one, but it is, is what it is. But ultimately winning that one, get a P plus from the board. The, obviously, the cup. We didn't lose anything. Not bad. Not bad. We did have to play Borussia Dortmund early and then Hertha Berlin late. So, honestly, relatively easy run there. Uh, this one, nothing too crazy. Honestly, on, both of these were pretty easy runs. Chelsea was probably the hardest. AS Monaco, I mean, these, really not much there. It was it was really ours to lose at that point. And then, of course, we only got a D in of the Bundesliga. But hopefully, I assume that let's still we get to still get to keep our, go, our jobs because we performed so well elsewhere. Biggest win, obviously the 12-0 against Gabenbach. Uh, match to remember was our 7-0 against FC St. Pauli. And goal of the season was a 33rd minute goal from Greiger, one of his hat tricks in that game. Let's see if we can watch this real quick. All three of our strikers played well in this game. Sarmiento to Lacqua. Boom! Lockwood with a goal. Big goal. There's Odalon, Lucas, Taylor, Schmidt to Sarmiento. There's Gregor. One of his three goals. Not bad, not bad. Is the next one 30. No, this is one more after this. Taylor with the ball. Almost loses it. Schmidt over to Bruckner. Easy goal for Bruckner. And it should be the next one, I think. I think it's this one. Schmidt. There's Gregor. <laughs> a little bit of curve on that one. Not bad. Not bad at all. We might as well watch the rest of these. Taylor to Schmidt. Schmidt to Sarmiento. There's Gregor. Here's his third. His hat trick. 
We got three more, right? Oh, it's just a penalty shot from Lakwa. And then a something here is Bruckner. Deers. Taylor. <laughs> Such a good one. Such a good one. And that was it. I guess the last one didn't count. Because it was I guess called back or whatever. Wow, not bad though. Not bad. Oof, good stuff there. The finances. Okay, this is this is where it gets a little rough. No new sponsorships. No new notable deals. A little bit lower in the sponsorships, a little bit lower in the broadcast revenue, lower in the corporate hospitality, just because we weren't in the Champions League, right? A lot of things we got lowered this season. It was a pretty tough season financially, but next season should be even better. Johnny, Greiger, Sarmiento, Schmidt, and Taylor. Not a bad lineup of shirts. I think there's a couple other players that should be in there, but not too bad. How we lined up, obviously the 4-2-1-3 or 4-3-3 or however you want to call it uh, with the attacking midfielder was the primary way we lined up. But obviously we did we did use the defensive midfielder quite a bit as well. Ilyev, man, really came through. Gregor, Ilyev, Sarmiento, Carlos. I mean, really some really good players there. Really good players there. I can't argue with the starting lineup at all. That's a good starting lineup. Um, Getting old. Player awards. Gregor, player of the season for the fans. That makes sense. Young player of the season was Schmidt. Absolutely. Signing of the season was Greiger. Goal of the season was Greiger. Top goal scorer was Greiger. Most assists was Schmidt. 18 assists from our fullback. Nice. Most player of the match awards was Greiger. Average uh, rating was Greiger. And most passes completed was Lucas. Uh, getting in there and breaking up the Schmidt-Greiger show. Uh, most goals by a player in a match was Greiger with four. Schmidt got 20 or got 18 assists, was the most assists by a player in a season. Most clean sheets by a player in a season was 24 by Andrada. Wow. Nice. Worst discipline, unfortunately, we did get Schmidt some discipline issues there. 17 yellow cards, one red card. Uh, and then, of course, youngest player. Doesn't really matter that much because we just grabbed some guy off the bench. I mean, it was, whatever. He's not going to be uh, sticking around for very much. Uh, competition awards. German footballer of the year was Greiger. And German players newcomer of the year was Gutierrez. Not bad. Would love to keep Gutierrez again if we can get a good, good, good prize for him. Your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at our end of season awards ceremony. The Foles, I guess that's our name, experienced a challenging campaign climbing up to the first at the end of their early uh, rise in September, but were un unable to convert that early form into sufficient season long momentum to achieve their preseason aims. I mean, yeah, we slipped up a little bit, but the other teams just played really well. I mean, we just, we, we played well, they just played better and that is what it is, you know? Would have been nice to get a little bit more, but I mean, people are still coming back for Diaria. We'll come back to you, Diaria. Um, best 11 squad, we've got Carlos was good enough to make it to the best 11. He's not, he's on the bench though. It's interesting that this is their best like lineup. Five at the back. Borneo was the guy we got rid of. Man, we don't have any of these players anymore. There's Lucas. There's Lubach. Remember him. Lockwood and Carlos. Yeah. Uh, we don't care about the best 11 because we weren't here for that anyway. Uh, we don't care about the 2022. We weren't here for that. Season analysis. I mean, besides fouls, which I can't explain because, again, we did not have get stuck in and turned on. It's just, it must be other instructions, like I said. Uh, I mean, we were terrible on fouls. Um, but other than that, not bad. Not bad. Team attacking. I still would love to get the passing completion up a little bit more, but other than that, not bad. General performance, again, passing completion, tackles one, but other than otherwise, pretty good. Uh, movements, we were up in this top left quadrant with uh, FC Bayern, apparently VFB Stuttgart as well, interesting. Lots of dribbles, reliable in possession. And then aerial, uh, lots of headers, strong heading. Right up there with RB Leipzig and uh, FC St. Pauli. But yeah, not bad. Good stuff. All right. So Club Vision, they want us qualify for the European Champions Cup. Makes sense. Reach first knockout round of the Champions Cup. Sounds good. Uh, anything up here that I need to care about? Not really. Same players placed in Germany. We can try. Challenge for the title at some point. Obviously, we want to do that sooner than they would like to do it. But no, I'm okay with this vision. This current vision. Overall squad dynamics not looking too bad in a season team meeting. Oh. 
I want to challenge for the title. And they all seem happy with that. I want to reach the knockouts. I think that's fair. And I will do some promises later. Have a great time, guys. But yeah, pretty good. Pretty good season. Anything else we need to look at? I don't think so. Injuries, though. I can't believe we did what we did with all the injuries we had. It was a nightmare on the injury side of thing. Euro Cup player of the season. We actually went to the Chelsea player, but we got second and third with Greiger and Lacqua. Uh Euro Cup golden boot. Greiger was third behind the Rene and Napoli players. And then Euro Cup squad of the season was pretty much all us, except for three people. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, well, I'm going to go do some transfer stuff. Obviously, we got some stuff going on right now with uh, Doraria. We'll, we'll take care of that. I'll be taking care of that. Uh, and I'm going to come back and let you guys know if anything changes, anything interesting changes. You guys will know as soon as I know. So we'll be back. All right, we are back. Goodness, it took me a couple hours to get through the transfer stuff, as it usually does, but uh, this one was... I don't know if it was good. Um, it was not... It wasn't terrible. We got a couple good players. We got a, several players for the future, uh, which may not help my personal challenge, but still should help the team overall. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll get into this, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to turn off my camera because the first two transfers happened... Right before the end of the year. I guess you guys saw some of that uh, in the last episode. Uh, and so I will show you the results of that here. And then we'll come back and do the what happened this season so far. Uh, so we did sell Diaria. Uh, we sold him for 31 mil. Uh, considering we paid 21.5 mil for him. Uh, and got 31 mil back. Not too bad. Uh, we didn't use, use him a whole time. He, he, did, he did play, obviously. Uh, in fact, how much did he play for us? You know, 15 appearances. One goal, 6.79. It wasn't the greatest rating in the world. So, honestly, I was perfectly happy with um, having him move on. Uh, he wanted to leave, and I didn't want unhappy players. So, that seemed like a good idea. Uh, we then sold Zazi to Sheffield United here. Uh, we got 61 mil for him, uh, considering he came on board for 29.5, and we sold him for 61. Not too bad. And again, he was another player who played a lot. Honestly, he did play quite a bit for us. Uh, decent rating, but I thought we could do better. And getting double double value for him after a year felt like a pretty good move. Especially, again, he wanted to leave. And I'm not going to stand in the way of players uh, too much if they want to leave. Um, because I don't want to cause problems. So, here is how things look now. And there's one here at the bottom. You don't have to worry about that one. That's just a loan for a youngster. So, I'm going to leave my, my <laughs> screen on. Um, a lot that we spent... Not a lot coming back. Um, I've tried to keep as many players here that I really wanted to keep as possible, except for the, you know those first two that wanted to leave. Um, the only one of those two that I would have might have kept was was Zazi, but it's okay. You know I think we can do better. Uh, we sold this guy named Nerig for 1.8 mil. No big deal there. Brian Gill, you know we've we've seen him. We played him you know, a bit here and there. Uh, we sold him for um, 16.5. Now he came into the team for 47.5 before I got here. Um, which is a lot of money, quite frankly. And he played well, honestly. He played well. He didn't play a lot, though. That's the thing. He played well, but he didn't play a lot. Uh, and he wanted to leave. And again, I don't want unhappy players here. So getting a little bit of money for him, for a player that I wasn't using that much, felt like an okay move. Although he did go to an internal rival overall. So we'll see. We'll see how much that affects us. Uh, 32 years old. He doesn't have a lot of years ahead of him. I don't know. Like I said, we'll find out. Johnny's a big one that I probably wouldn't have mind keeping. But again, he wanted to leave. And I want to keep people happy. Um, they bought him for $69 million a few years back. We played him quite a bit. Uh, he dropped off a little bit this last season. Um, but he's played well. He has played overall well. Uh, but we're getting a little bit of money for him back. I don't know. Felt like a decent move. Uh, he's 31 years old. You know, got a few years ahead of him. But... We got a little bit of money for a guy that wanted to leave anyway. Uh, Moffie, Moffie went out. We had him out on loan last season. Uh, so we got a little bit of money for him. Georgie also, we had him out on loan. Got 17.5 mil for him. I thought that was pretty good for a 32-year-old uh, goalkeeper that we weren't using. Uh, and then Nicholas Dominguez. Um, 
I don't know. It would have been nice to keep him probably because I think he played decently well for us and he was a good, had the experience and stuff like that. We paid 4.5. We got four back. I mean, he, he didn't play outstandingly, but he was solid. I mean, like he was like that guy that could come in, had the experience and we knew he wasn't going to screw up. Even though he wasn't going to play like amazingly well, he also probably wasn't going to screw up that much. So um, it was nice to have him around, but I'm also okay with seeing him leave if he wants to leave. So here's the guys that come in. Whew, okay, so we did pick up Gutierrez. I went ahead and got him. We got 30, paid 33 million just flat for him. I felt like 33 mil for him was a decent price. Uh, I think I think he was worth 33 mil to us last year. I mean, he played a good amount of time, um, especially once we had injury, injuries, and he had a 7.45 rating. Hopefully he can reproduce that again this season, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I think uh, it might have been a little bit of a stretch since he's not going to really improve that much more. But solid player that we already knew it was a known quantity. Might as well, right? Uh, Gibbons, that was already a, a secured one before. Uh, obviously, he played really well for us last season. And we're going to see how he does for us this season uh, now that we have him. Hopefully, he does well for us. Uh, we then picked up Jung Jae Sung here. We, we actually looked at him a few times. I don't remember if I looked at him while on video this last season, but I looked at him a lot. This was the one, this is the gamble, and I probably overpaid for him. I will admit that. I probably overpaid for him, okay? But he comes in here, solid three star right away, could go as high as four star. He's 19 year old wonder kid. Um, actually, if we go look at the squad depth, ignore this. I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, look at all positions and look at head of youth development. Uh, if we look at potential ability, what has he got? So he's got him at three and a half stars. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was a bad move. Truth be told, the scouts had him at like five stars, like solid, like I'm not solid, but like, yeah, I think it was actually a solid, uh, three and a half and then up to five stars, something like that. It was, it was, it was looking like a better rating from the scouts than it turned out to be. Maybe once we got him in here and the coaches started to look at him, I still think it could be turned out to be a pretty good player. Uh, probably overpaid for him. I think he's probably worth, once all said and done, once we see him actually fully develop, I would not be surprised if he's worth 70, 75 mil. Um, so we, again, we paid maybe 25 mil over for him. But I kind of wanted him, and I don't know. Like I said, probably a mistake, but every once in a while, you got to take a gamble on somebody. And sometimes those gambles turn out to be extremely good, and sometimes not so much. So we'll see. Um, the one good thing about him is that there's a good chance that he could give us some commercial revenue because he's like one of the top Korean players uh, on the Korean national team. So there's a decent chance that we could get some extra um, commercial stuff. That's what actually one of the emails came back and said that they were really happy that I brought him in because they thought the commercial potential was there. Now, is that going to make up 25 mil? Probably not, but maybe makes up some of that. Uh, we then got Nicholas Michelani here. Uh, we got him for 50 mil up front. Could go up to 60 mil from Milan. He comes in 24 years old. Three-star, just solid midfielder. Could go up to three and a half stars. Just really just a player that can come in here to the midfield. Uh, he's actually played not super great for Italy, but I'm really hoping that he can turn some stuff around for us. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what he can do for us. Maybe maybe he's overpaid again, but he's got good passing. And passing something that we've been dealing with, some issues with for a while. And I would like to have some good passing back in here. Uh, decent stamina, vision. I mean, we'll see. If he can anchor down that midfield and, and do some good stuff, then, then good. But uh, again, maybe overpaid, maybe not. It's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, Cordero, here's where we start this chain of, all right, I've got about 45 million left. I can't really find a good player for 45 mil um, or, you know, anywhere around there. So let's just go get a bunch of players for backups because that was one of the things we struggled with last season was decent backups and rotations so that our players weren't just falling over dead all the time, which they, they got a lot of injuries. So, Here's a string of five players. Uh, basically, the most expensive one was 13.25. The rest of them were under 10. Uh, and the 13.25 is Mason Mount. You guys have seen him before, but we'll come back to him in a second. So Christian Cordero comes in here. Uh, two and a half stars could go, could actually go as high as four to five stars. He actually could be better than the other guy, um, the other defender we have. Um, what's his name? Jay, Jay Sung. He could actually be better than Jay Sung. If this guy ends up being even as good as Jay Sung, then... This is where we got our money back. He's already valued at 61 to 72 mil. And we paid um, 9 mil for him. 
That's where we made our money back on Jay Sung. If you told me I can get a guy as good as Jay Sung and a guy as good as Cordero for $110 million, so $55 million a piece, I think I'd sign up for that all day long. So, yeah, overpaid maybe, majorly underpaid. I think in the end, I think we actually ended up with a really good setup there. Uh, we then we got Andrew Shunin uh, from Real Madrid. Oh, just real quick, Cordero, again, 19 years old. Um, he's out and played a lot. He played in Argentina, 7.04, but we'll see what he does here in our neck of the woods. Uh, anyway, so Andre Shunin comes in here, 22 years old, just a two-star, could go up to three-star. Honestly, could be a decent player. Uh, he comes in here as a left winger. Get back to that. I'm, I'm spoiling an alert a little bit if you guys saw that formation that I might be potentially trying. We'll see. We'll get into that here in just a second, but he just comes in here as a backup option for that. Um, didn't pay a ton of money for him. He's actually played pretty well for Real Madrid or Real Madrid B. So not played a lot, but when he's played, he's played well. So we'll see what he can do. Again, backup player could develop to be a little bit better. We didn't pay a lot of money for him. Obviously, Mason Mount comes in here. He's old, 34 years old. How much does he have left in him? How much does he have left in the tank? I don't know. If we get a year, maybe two out of him, then I think it's a win. But uh, we only paid 13 mil for him, 13.25 or whatever it was. Uh, the big thing for him is that he's costing us a lot of money on the salary, to be fair, because he's, you know, he, uh, where's the salary? Somewhere, somewhere, on here somewhere. I'm sure it's on the screen, but maybe I'm blind. There it is, 165. Um, so he, um, you know, he's playing a decent, decent amount for the salary, but he's obviously an exceptionally good player. And he's another good player that's got reputation. Help us sell some t-shirts. I mean, that's one of the things the board really wanted us to do, to be able to sell some t-shirts. So 13.25. Seems like a decent deal for somebody who may give us a year, maybe two. Uh, Miguel Hernandez comes in here for five mil, could go as high as five mil. I'm not sure what that's about. I don't remember that. Um, again, another two star could go as high as three star. Just decent backup player that's not going to be going down to our under 19s and getting a half star, one star player. He's a good player that could develop a little bit better, could still get a little bit better. And if he does and we decide we don't need him anymore, we could probably sell him for double the price. So we will see. Um, he actually played a little bit for PSG2 last season. Uh, 25 appearances, 15 goals, 2 assists, 2 player matches, 7.38. I mean, again, it's a lower league, but I mean, he know, we know he can play. Can he play at this level? We'll find out. And again, really just an emergency backup at the end of the day. Finally, Latoro Martinez, another guy just like Mason Mount that comes in here. So we got th several youngsters, and then we got a couple older guys. Latoro comes in here, 9.75, going up to 13 mil. Solid 4-star striker. Uh, could also play attacking midfielder. 35 years old. Again, another older guy. If I can just get a year or two out of him. Um, and, and again, we're going to get injuries. We're going to get issues with that. We're going to need some rotation. Uh, he may even be starting for us. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, Or maybe he just starts for those impact games that we really need him in because we know he's got the skill, but he can't play all the time because he's probably not going to have the, the stamina. Um, and not this stamina. I mean, obviously, just like overall player stamina. We'll see. But if we can play him in a few of the Impact games alongside make some mount. Uh, with that experience, I think we have a fighting chance. So that's our team for the most part. Um, so back over here to the squad depth. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, and we go back to current ability. So, and again, I'm, I'm spoiler alerting my, my position, my formation. <laughs> we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, so Gregor is our best striker. Martinez is our second best. No surprise there. Um, Mason Mount could be our best attacking midfielder or attack our midfielder or even defensive midfielder if we decide to do that. Uh, obviously, we've got several defenders, all of them at three stars. I was really hoping to get a better defender, just couldn't quite get it to happen. But several of these guys could develop and become better. So we got Lucas Davies, Odalon Gibbons, and Jung, uh, Jung Jae Sung. So we'll see what they can do. Uh, a couple guys on the right should be okay. Uh, several guys on the left. We got plenty of guys on the left. Uh, so we're not going to have any left problems on that side of things. That's one of the things about Jay Sung is that he can play on the left. He can play midfield, defensive midfielder, I should say. He can play midfield or left as well. So he's pretty flexible, which is good to see. Um, other than that, obviously we just got the two goalkeepers. Wouldn't mind having a third goalkeeper just to be able available, but maybe maybe Ruiz here will develop a little bit. I mean, honestly, if he got to two, two and a half stars, he'd be a really solid backup for us, but I'm not holding my breath about that one. Uh, as far as the team itself, if we go look at the competition, by the way, I should tell you this, because you already see that already, um, we won the Super Cup against RB Leipzig, which is the winner of the 
German Cup from last season against the winner of the league. I don't know how hard they were trying, but we beat them 4-2 to two with a new formation. Uh, we then went up against uh, a team in the DFK, Polkel, who cares, uh, beat them 11-1. Uh, as far as the Super Cup, by the way, we got a pair of goals from Lakua, a goal from Taylor, and a goal from Mount. Mason Mount picking up a goal in his first game for us. Good stuff there. You can see all the friendlies. Not really that much that matters, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, and we then went up against the Euro Super Cup. Interesting thing here that I didn't realize. Hertha Berlin won the Champions League. I was like, I saw the Euro Super Cup and I was like, wouldn't that be the winner of the Champions League against the Euro? You're telling me Hertha Berlin won the Champions League? Sure enough, they a week after we beat them in the cup game, they went out and played Manchester United for the Champions League final and won. So they're a good team and we beat them in the, in the cup. So that feels pretty good. But uh, we beat them here again in the Euro Super Cup. Again, I don't know how hard they were trying, but we got to go from Odalon, a go from Carlos, and a pair of goes from Gutierrez. Um, so we got a double already. We got a couple trophies. Nobody really cares about them. Um, the board definitely doesn't care about them, but hey, we beat two really, really solid teams. Maybe they sent their, you know, under 19s out there for all we know. Um, so how are we looking? Because I haven't actually looked at this. So this is new to me. How are we looking on the season preview? Is it at least above five? Because last season it was five, and we got fourth. Is it at least above five? Third. Okay. Okay. It's better. <laughs> it's definitely better. Uh, it's third, and maybe we can get second, and maybe maybe still first. We were only a few points away. Did we make up four points with the guys we brought in? I mean, that's what? A win and a draw? Or two? Let's say two wins. Did we make up two wins? I th I really think Mason Mount and Lotaro themselves, by themselves, make up two wins. I think absolutely those guys can get two wins. Now, obviously the other teams in the league have also improved, so we can't just truly go off of that entirely. But I think those two guys alone, for sure, two wins guaranteed. But, you know, what about the rest of the stuff? Um, as far as uh, players here, Greiger's in here, obviously. Schmidt's in here. Mount's in here. So we've actually got three of the best uh, Dream 11, uh, one of them being Mount that we brought in. So I'm glad to have him. We'll see what he can get from him. But obviously, Greiger and Schmidt. Greiger actually getting up there. I mean, he wasn't there last season. Schmidt, I think, was, wasn't he? I can't remember. Um, but uh, Greiger sneaking in there now. So good stuff there. Um, any other key players? What else that I can see over here that's jumping out at me? But that's not bad. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. We'll see if we can actually pull it off. Hertha Berlin, FC Bayern are going to be two tough teams. Oh, by the way, speaking of FC Bayern, um, obviously FC Bayern job was available when we last talked. I did not apply for the FC Bayern job. I decided that I really want to win it with the team we've got. Um, if I ever go away and come back, sure, I'll, I'll probably come back to FC Bayern. But the inner squad or inner division move felt just not quite what I wanted, right? I just didn't feel quite right. So I decided to stay with the team we've got, and just leave FC Bayern alone. Now, I may end up regretting that, because guess who got the manager job at FC Bayern? <sighs> he's following us. I'm telling you, he's following us. The guy that was our Achilles heel at Arsenal in England, Jurgen Klopp, has come to Germany to play for FC Bayern, or to coach, manage FC Bayern here, um, and I have a feeling he's going to make them really, really good. So, a little worried about it. But we shall see. Um, I mean, obviously, he's played. He, he's played in Germany. He's managed in Germany for Borussia Dortmund, Mainz. Uh, he's managed all over the place. Let's see. He's managed Germany. He's managed England. He's managed Italy. He's managed back in England. Back in Italy. Back in England. Oh, he managed in Spain. Oh, that's right. He took the Barcelona job, didn't he? Did he? Was I? Did I remember that? Oh no, no, I wasn't even looking at that that time. But he did take a Barcelona job for a year. Um, which note on that here in a second. So he's managed in Spain. He's done what we want to do, right? He's managed all over the place. Um, speaking of Barcelona, the Barcelona job did come available. I didn't realize why it came available until I looked at this just now. Barcelona job came available. I interviewed. Uh, they actually gave me the interview. Um, I did not get the job. It's okay. I would have probably left for Barcelona. Barcelona's a really good team and would have been worth leaving for, but we didn't get the job. No big deal. You know, we move on. That's okay. So anyway, that is that. Now for the tactics. Okay, let's get into this. Here's the tactic I'm going to be trying. I've actually played it in those first two games, those first two real games, and I've played it in several of the friendlies as well, but those first two real games, and of course the German Cup that didn't matter, but because it was a nothing team. 
it's an interesting formation here, guys. This is this is a another formation I found off of FM base. You know, I just I, I tend to go here every couple of weeks, refresh the page to see if any new formations have popped up that look interesting. And this one looked interesting. Um, and so and we've got a lot of the players that can play in some good spots for this to support it. So I felt like it was worth trying out. Obviously, Mason Mount can play Shadow Striker, perfectly fine. Um, Sarmiento. It can play on the left really well. Gutierrez, not too bad on the right. We've actually got a couple other guys that can play on the right as well. Greiger can, 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 can come back here. Uh, Carlos, when he comes back from suspension, can play over here. Uh, that new guy, Shunin, uh, Hernandez. And we've got several guys that can play on the left play on the, uh, and the right. Uh, and, of course, we got plenty of strikers. And that's where these guys are coming from. These are actually strikers coming back here to the wings. So, in a weird way, this is almost like the formation we just had, except... Instead of having three strikers in an attack midfielder, we almost have four strikers in a weird way because these wingers are gonna—they're gonna get up there. They're gonna—we had our wingers before, or our strikers before, kind of stretching out to the wings, uh, and these wingers are just gonna be out there already. And we still got two strikers in there, so there's some there's some similarity there. Although there's also a lot of difference. One thing about this, there's not a very not very many extractions, so we'll see how that plays. We are still playing counter press. I'm not passing it as a space right now. I may change that. We'll find out. But for now, we're gonna leave it as is. Um, and we're still playing the inverted wingbacks, so nothing's changed there. Um, but the other thing is that because the inverted wingbacks are going to be getting into these areas anyway, they're just going to come swooping through here. Um, that really takes care of our midfield um, needs, right? We're not really going to have too much issues in the midfield through here. Now, we might have a little bit of issue up front of the defensive midfielder, which is why you see this red spot here. Uh, we're also going to have a little bit of issues on these actual wings because, again, as these, mid these, these wingbacks swoop in they're going to cover this midfield spot and yeah okay we're going to be a little bit exposed down the actual wings um so it's a risk it's a risk but everything everything comes with a risk right but as a roaming playmaker uh, we obviously need a solid player here cordero i would not say is our solid player uh, normally i would be playing um actually normally i was going to be playing mount back here why is mount back here instead of a uh a, a I think it's because of some of the injuries and suspension. I think that's causing me some some weirdness here. I might move some things around, play Mount back there after all. But uh, this is not the final what I'm going to play for this this squad. I just grabbed whatever the coach said just so I can at least see it. Um, but I'm going to go through this line, you know, player by player and make sure I have the right setup before we actually start playing. But anyway, so again, roaming playmaker really just anchoring down that midfield um, with those wingbacks swooping in and then a pair of ball playing defenders behind them. I don't know. We'll see. I think it'll be okay. I think it's going to give up a lot of goals, but I also think it's going to score a lot of goals. So we'll find out if this is a good move or not. I still have the other formations in there, but, um, and of course you can see who, who created this one. The guy, I guess, I'm not sure if the guy's name is Zaz or yeah, it looks like the guy, uh, his name is Zaz and this is named blue 4.0 is what the name of the formation is. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I like changing things. I like, I like trying new formations, right? Um, and then sometimes I'll tweak them myself as I kind of see how things work and how I want to move things around. But for the most part, I like I like trying other people's formations and see what they do. I think it's kind of fun to get other people's ideas. Plus, I also I personally, as a computer science uh, well major in college, but also a computer science profession, I love the idea of simulations that can do all the the runs and and automate things and tell you like, hey, this is what this thing did over a course of you know, several hundred matches and things like that. I don't know. To me, that's just kind of cool and fun. But anyway, um, episode, it's not too bad. Uh, I was going to say it's getting a little bit long, but it's actually about 30 minutes. Not too bad. But that's it. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Uh, as far as the season this year, I'm really not going to show anything until... It, I'm not going to show any of the cup games or the Champions League or anything like that unless we get far into it. If we get far into it, sure, I'll show you because why not? Primarily, we're going to be showing the league. The league is our is really the only reason we're here, right? That's all we've got left to win, um, and then we can move on. This is our thirteenth season, by the way, guys. Thirteenth season. So this is beginning of. We only have thirteen seasons left, you know, counting this season, right? We got twenty five seasons total. We've already done twelve. Thirteen seasons left to get all this done, and we've got to finish Germany, and we got three other nations to go to: Spain, Italy, and France. Back to France, I should say. Uh, but thankfully, we have finished Euro Champions League. That is huge. Um, we still need to win the World Cup and the uh, European Championship for, for Spain. We'll see how we can do that. Um, I will show you actually real quick before I move on. 
Spain did play in the International League. Um, we actually lost England in extra time, and then we beat Italy. So not super great, but nobody really cared. It wasn't one that was we were being judged on that much. Uh, really, the big thing is this World Cups. We're in the World Cup qualifiers. Um, I don't know if I'll show any of those matches. I'll probably show once we get past the Euro qualifiers, uh, and then we'll start showing games in the actual proper World Cup. So there you go, guys. That is our setup, and I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be a fun season. I think we got a couple really key players. Did we get better? That's always the question I have to ask, season over season. Did we get better? I think we definitely got better in a couple spots. Midfield? Absolutely. Striker? We got a really good striker, although we weren't really struggling in striker, but hey, picking up a good striker is good. I think we got more depth in defender, which is something we were really weak on, and just more depth overall. So we will see. But anyway, I do appreciate you guys watching. I uh, hope you guys join me again next episode as we start the very first games here in the Bundesliga. Uh, may God bless you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout-out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.